Welcome back everyone and you are in for a treat in today's video where you are getting a selection of my artwork available online at jamieyork.com free of charge plus shipping at $19.99. Welcome to the YouTube channel and if you're interested in finding out more about property investment we're going to be deep diving around houses versus flats, freehold versus leasehold and everything in between. If you want to find out more about property investment do me a favor hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified about the videos coming up and hey if you get that from this video at any point all the way through just lightly tap the like button it really does help reach more people just like you and hopefully give more value so let's jump straight in So the first thing that we need to be thinking about is the area dependency, okay? This is gonna be a very different conversation to if you're investing in West Yorkshire, in Leeds, for example, which has a massive variety of houses, apartments, all types of uh, property, commercial and residential, or zone one central London, where if you've got a house, you are a rich mother. Okay, edit that part out. But you are minted, okay? Pretty much everything is a flat. So let's get rid of that area dependency because I'll deep dive around flats if they are your only options, okay? But let's jump in overall. So first of all, the real core difference is freehold versus leasehold. And I'll come to that in a moment, actually, because I want to talk about the end user. Let me just rub this out. If you want to take a photo, take it now, because I imagine I'll sign it, it's fine. Right, let's move it. So. If we look at the end user, and I think this is really important, you need, and not many people talk about this, end user, is it going to be, are you selling the property, are you renting the property, things like that. What I always think is, property investment is a business like anything else, and if you're a good business person, you understand your money is made around one word value, which you'll hear me say about 4,000 times um, in every video. But value is where you're really at. And money is made by an exchange of value based on how many people you help or how well you help each individual. Now, unless you are absolutely minted, then you're not going to be helping loads of people um, on a tenant basis. You're probably going to be helping a few people, a handful of people each year as you build up your property investment portfolio by following the information that I go through on this channel. So remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. But this also goes the same for an end buyer. So the reason why I typically prefer houses over the flats, and that was a block of flats, as you can see, um, but there's a lot more flexibility. So who would like to buy this house? Well, the real house, not this one. Well, you might have a little garden out front with some flowers along the way. That could be a individual, single bloke, single woman, single whatever they're identifying as. Could also have a nice back garden that's coming in. They might have kids, they might have pets, um, they might have a growing or burgeoning family. Um, things like that. House is going to apply to pretty much everyone, dependent on what level of maintenance they want and therefore the size of the gardens front and back. I really am terrible at drawing. Um, it also offers a lot more flexibility on the inside around movements and things like that. For flats, I think what's really important is it really does limit it. Do people have dogs that live in flats? Yes, but most people know because no chance for running around. Can you build a family in a flat? No, not really, unless they are massive ones, because do you want three, four kids in a small flat? I realize some of us don't have a choice. I get that, but the choice, probably not. Would you have a garden for your dog? No, most flats don't, okay? So usability, and I think flexibility as well, comes a lot more within the house but that is just my personal opinion. And by the way, it doesn't mean I'm right. I know for a fact there are people that would much prefer living in a flat than a house, okay? That is just your personal preference. But I do believe more people um, as a selection, if you've got a thousand people, I think more people would have more usability from a house than a flat, my personal opinion. So the next thing and the real thing you need to think about is freehold versus leasehold. So I'm gonna um, divide this up, okay? So you've got here, and I know this is gonna look really weird, you've got the sky, okay? Here, you've got the house. 
here we go and here you've got the ground now what happens with a freehold is you own the, the ground underneath the property and above to a certain height and in cities it will have some small print about how high you own okay because of airspace and that but i'm not going to be deep diving around that it's a bit ridiculous but this is really where people need to divide up when you own the freehold of a property which 99 percent of leasehold of houses are freehold there are certain areas especially in the northeast you've got tyneside leases um, and in the northwest you've got something called virtual freeholds which i'll touch on in a moment and this is getting a bit advanced but i'd rather deep dive around it but the point of a freehold is you own the ground underneath it that's really important because you own the ground you have permanent rights to the property that's on top of it okay now, okay, that sounds really weird. Well, if we look at the other, let's go to a flat. If we just bring that up. Let's say you own this flat here. Okay, that's great. Most flats, in, in fact, pretty much all, flipping on its head, 99% of flats are leasehold. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated, okay? The reason for that is when you've got your ground, here's where you need to understand. You may own the flat, but you do not own the ground underneath it. Now try and get your head around that. Imagine a block of flats. When you're walking to your flat, you own what is behind that door for a duration. And you pay the freeholder for rights to get to your property because you do not own the land okay you have something called a freeholder agreement or a management agreement and you pay a service charge and ground rent usually that ground rent is part of your agreement for this so normally when you get it's called a lease extension you usually extend it for like 125 years, okay? So you might say, uh, buying this house as a 125 year lease, and that's it. This is what it means. It means you are leasing rights to that ground for 125 years, okay? Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. And normally within that, you are going to pay ground rent. Now, it's usually fairly nominal, but it can end up costing, you know, 50 pound a month or something like it can be a lot more if they're screwing you over. But if you are buying this as an investment, as a buy to let property, and you are thinking about the long term impact of that, you need to net your cost down. So if you're paying ground rent, you have to pay it. The other thing is, if you're in a newer flat, or even old ones in blocks, you have to pay service charge. So think about your hallways. If you've got a lift, if somebody, if the windows all need uh, updating, if cladding needs sorting, that is what your service charge is for. So you pay the management company to look after the services. So the checks on the company, who comes and cleans the lift? When an engineer comes out to the lift, who pays for that? You do through your service charges. On top of that, if there are issues with the overall fabric of the building, um, then you're gonna have to deal with that through your service charges as well. So you wanna look at service charges, which is a cost within that. The other thing to take account of, by the way, is when you're getting insurance for a leasehold property, technically you don't need buildings insurance because the, the buildings insurance is for the fabric of the building, which the freeholder owns, okay? So, but you need to make sure they've got that. But the thing you're having to consider here is how long is left on the lease? What's the ground rent and what's the service charge? This part is important to work out what your net is, okay? So if you're earning a thousand pound a month, from a leasehold property it is not the same as getting a thousand pound a month for a, a house okay if everything else is the same you will receive less money more than likely on a leasehold property okay and the reason for that is you're paying ground rent and service charge something to factor in the other two things that i'll say about this um, particular in this section is number one is the terms of the lease so you can 
make some alterations to your flat, but if you decide, oh, I want to rent it out on a holiday let basis, uh, no, you can't. A lot of leases, if they're written already, will prohibit that and you are doing it illegally. Okay, so most SA providers or a lot of SA service accommodation providers, Airbnb providers that are doing it in flats are doing so illegally without the permission of the freeholder. There are countless times I've seen people take on rent to SAs, um, rent service accommodations, only to find out and get a bollocking from the management agent three months earlier, three months later, because they never actually got the permissions from the true landlord okay now most investors think the landlord is the person that's renting out the property no the landlord is the person that owns the freehold of the property okay that's the true landlord of it so number one you need to look at terms i've also seen people buying one bed flats in london and turning it into two bed flats illegally um, and they're even selling them illegally but they don't know that they're selling it illegally the problem with that is if retrospectively that person goes no you couldn't do that you shouldn't have done that you can get sued down the line okay so always any alterations that you make to your leasehold property in this case a flat make sure you're checking in with the freeholder to make sure it's cool the final thing is a short lease now this is getting a bit technical Anything when it goes below around 70 years, you can still get mortgage lenders, but it gets a lot harder, okay? It gets a lot harder to get a mortgage on a property with, it's like 66 years or something like that, but less than 70 years, it starts to get more complicated. The lending gets more expensive. And the reason for that is, you know, by the time it gets to it, you're not really getting anything from it. So I know of Chelsea Flats, which might be 800,000 pound, that sell for 150 grand. And the reason for that is because if you extended the lease on it and you extended it for um, 125 years, or some cases 70 or 80 years um, in those areas, you'd be paying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands to the freeholder to extend it. So yeah just think about that if you are buying a property very quick on this if you are buying a property with a short leasehold you will need to issue something called a section 42. a section 42 is you have to extend your the freeholder has to extend your lease okay and the way that you start this process is something called a section 42. well a lot of people don't know because a lot of people go oh i'll just buy it at a good price cash and then just extend the lease right no, um, the section 42 cannot, which is the start of the process of extending and paying for the extension of lease, cannot be issued by somebody that hasn't owned the property for more than two years. So I've seen a lot of investors buy a property for cash, try to extend it, and it's like, no, you need to own it for two years. And they think, oh crap, now I've got cash in this property for two years that I didn't think about, okay? Really hits people hard and they have to sell it on. The best way of doing this is, you don't have to go all the way through the process, ask the vendor to issue a section 42, you'll need to pay a few hundred quid in survey fees for it. They issue the section 42, and once that is confirmed receipt and acknowledgement from the freeholder, you can then buy the property and you continue it because it's already issued. Nice quick tip for you there. Cool, I think that's everything within leaseholds that I can think of right now. The final thing that I wanna cover um, tell you what, I won't do that just in case you were taking notes on that. Um, but obviously you can pause it. That was a bit stupid of me. So the final thing that we really want to touch on is virtual freehold. Virtual freehold is a leasehold property. Okay. It's just when there's something like 900 years on it, it's usually referred to as a virtual freehold, as in most people just treat it like a freehold property. Um, this is more outside of London, by the way, because the freeholder is usually the council and stuff like that. You can buy the freehold from them for like 500 quid or a thousand pound, but normally there is no service charge whatsoever um, on them because they're on houses. For example, in Burnley, the first property I ever bought in 36 Burdett Street, um, that was a virtual freehold, i.e. it was a leasehold property for 900 and something, and they have something called a peppercorn rent. So the ground rent 
is something like, that one was a pound a year. Just my opinion, please don't take this as financial advice. I don't know anyone that pays it. Like nobody ever pays it because if you ever did get chased for it, it's like nobody's paid it for the last 50 years. It's like, well, it's 50 quid then. Nobody bothers with the admin of that whatsoever and it's treated like a freehold. But again, remember it is a leasehold. So if there is a lease pack, which a lot of them don't have, just make sure you read on that because a lot of them have really weird covenants um, in them. Like you see, read the wording of it and it's like you can't have more than three people round in the garden at once. Seriously, I've read that in one before because it was written a hundred odd years ago and might have made sense for a reason back then. But those are the core things that you really want to look at. And you know, the, the main difference between buying a flat and a house, apart from the um, amenities that are available um, to it, is the fact that a majority of the time, a flat is a leasehold property and comes with a plethora of things to be thinking about and a property, a house as a property, 99% of the time will be a freehold. So my honest recommendation from a property investment perspective is unless, unless you live in a central London proximity where pretty much everything is a flat and they're the investments you're gonna be looking at, I think you'd be making life a lot easier for yourself to focus on your bread and butter, two and three bed, terraced and semi-detached properties for your first property investment. But hey, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think of this in the comments, by the way. I know I've covered a lot and I didn't mean to go that advanced with the section 42, but I'd rather give you more value than leave you with more questions. And by the way, I'm sure learning this for the first time, you do have questions. Ask away, okay? We try to get through to as many, if not all, of the comments that come through. So open a dialogue. I don't just want this to be communication to you and not communication back. And by the way, if you are interested in having more chats with me, hit me up on Instagram. You can reach me on Jamie York Aspire. If you want to actually take this into one-to-one -one conversation, it'd be great to communicate with you there. Make sure to comment YouTube at the start so I know that you've come over here so I can answer every single one of those. And if you got value from this, of course, subscribe and hit the notification bell to find out more when the next video comes up. And if you wanna help me and the law of reciprocity here, help more people just like you and help the algorithm and the reach of this channel and this video in particular, smash the like button and I'll see you in the next video.